Hello learners, it's Miss Ornelas. We're here to do our third read of our story of the week, A Bed for the Winter by Karen Wallace. Sit up nice and tall, turn on your listening ears, have your eyes watching, and remember to ignore distractions. Let's get started, readers. A fluffy-tailed dormouse stops by a meadow. Cold rain is falling. Soon snow will be coming. The Dormouse is looking for somewhere to sleep. She needs a bed for the winter. Meadow. Readers, why does the Dormouse need a bed? Yes. Friends, if you don't understand why the Dormouse needs a bed, what could you do? Yes, you can always reread what the author says. Let's try it now. I'm going to reread to see if we can understand why the Dormouse needs a bed. The Dormouse is looking for somewhere to sleep. She needs a bed for the winter. Yes, why does the Dormouse need a bed? She needs somewhere to sleep in the winter. A squirrel gathers leaves high in a tree. He makes his nest warm for the cold winter weather. But a nest in the treetops is too high for a dormouse. The dormouse looks up, then scurries by. Nest. Why does the squirrel gather leaves? What will squirrel do with those leaves? Yes, if you said make a nest, give your brain a kiss. So smart and clever. The squirrel will use the leaves to make its nest warm and cozy. A queen wasp sleeps under an oak stump. She has squeezed through a crack in the rotten wood. But a crack in an oak stump is too small for a dormouse. The dormouse looks in, then scurries by. Stump. Readers, how do you know this place is too small for the dormouse? Yes, it's the size of a wasp. And I know a wasp is very tiny compared to a dormouse. A golden-eyed toad sleeps under a stone. It is muddy and wet and the toad's skin is cold. But it's too wet for a dormouse under a stone. The dormouse looks in, then scurries by. What animal does the dormouse meet first? The very first animal, do you remember? Yes. And what animal does she meet after that? Good. Good listening ears, friends. Let's continue. A mother brown bear sleeps in a den. She is furry and warm. She stretches and yawns. The dormouse looks in. The bear's teeth are huge. The Dormouse trembles, then scurries by. Den. Readers, what do you think the bear would do if it woke up when the Dormouse was in the den? Do you remember our last story and how angry the bear got? Maybe that would happen again. What else could happen? Yes, I agree. All of those things might happen. Let's continue. Bats hang in a cave and cling to the rock. They huddle together and sleep through the winter. The cave is damp and dark. It's too cold for a dormouse. The dormouse looks in, then scurries by. Cave. Readers, why do you think the bats all huddle together? Yes, it is to stay warm. It also reminds me of our last story, A Bear Snores On, and all the animals huddled around the fire for the same reason, to stay warm. A family of rabbits hop into their burrow. They live underground when the weather is cold. But there are too many rabbits to make room for a dormouse. The dormouse looks in, then scurries by. Burrow. Readers, how are the Dormouse and the Rabbit alike? Let's compare them. How are they the same? 
yes, the color of their fur is the same, and their eyes are similar or the same too. What else? Their little feet are similar. Now, how are they different? What's different about them? Their size. I'm almost noticing the rabbit ears. Does the Dormouse have ears like that? No, does not. Well done. An owl with sharp claws flies over the meadow. He is hungry and watchful. He is hunting for mice. The owl swoops. The Dormouse hides in a bush. Where can she find a safe bed for the winter? Readers, who and what does the Dormouse meet before the owl? So right before this owl, do you remember what animal the Dormouse meets? If you said hey, the rabbits, give your brain a kiss. That's right. Good listening ears. Let's continue. A deer comes to the meadow. She nibbles the grass. Her coat has grown thick for the cold winter weather. The dormouse shivers in the wind, then scurries by. Readers, why do you think the deer's coat grows thick in the winter? Yes, to, to keep herself warm. And what do you think happens to her coat in the summer? Yes, you remembered. Good listening ears. A storm is coming. The sky has turned black. Bees fly home to their hive. Ants run to their nest. Hive. The dormouse waits under a branch for the storm to pass by. Where can she find a safe bed for the winter? Readers, what happens before the bees and the ants go into their homes? The sky turns black because a storm is coming. That's right. A snake slides through the grass. He has hungry black eyes. He stares at the dormouse. His tongue flicks in and out. The dormouse is trapped. She's too scared to move. Look at the picture of the snake. Look closely, get your attentoscopes up. Why do you think the Dormouse is afraid of the snake? What could happen? Mm. Right, the snake could eat the Dormouse. If you were the Dormouse, what would you do right now? Mm. Me too, I'd run as fast as I could, try to climb something to get away from the snake. The snake slithers closer. His forked tongue comes nearer. Boom! Thunder rumbles. Crack! Lightning flashes. The snake stops for a second, then shoots into the grass. Readers, what sound does the thunder make? Rumbles. Boom! What sound does the lightning make? Crack! as it flashes. Have you ever heard those sounds? Me too. The Dormouse runs through the meadow. Her heart pounds like a drum. She climbs up a tree trunk. She crawls into a hole. She finds a place that is safe and dry. Readers, why is the Dormouse's heart pounding? What kind of feeling is she having? Yeah, she's scared. That storm is coming. And also she met that scary snake. Snow falls on the meadow. The ground is frozen and hard. Nug in the tree hole, the dormouse is sleeping. Her long fluffy tail is wrapped tightly around her. Her search is over. The dormouse is safe. At last she has found her bed for the winter. Readers, why do you think the Dormouse rolls up into a little ball? Yes, if you said to stay warm, give yourself a pat on the back. My dog does this. She curls up into a little ball to go to sleep. And when I pet her, I can feel how warm and cozy she is. 
picture word list. Meadow, cave, nest, burrow, stump, hive, den, tree trunk. Readers, where does the Dormouse begin her adventure? Yes, in the meadow. And where does she end up at the end? In the tree trunk. Friends, we've come to the end of our story. I hope you enjoyed A Bed for the Winter as much as I did. Thank you for focusing your attention and being a great reader. See you soon, friends.